guys and girls, welcome back to Watch The Time. Thanks for tuning back in. Thanks for coming back to see me. I'm really pleased you've done so. And I'm really pleased about to bring you my state of the collection for 2023. Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, I, hope you had a, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I hope you had a great 2023. Um, and this is what you voted for. So between this and the fawn, uh, the fawn will come out sometime very soon. But um, you want to see the state of the collection. My, my collection hasn't changed massively. There's been a few additions. There have been a few that have just had to go into my personal collection. A lot of the watches that I buy really are for the channel, but sometimes they're that good. They have to stay in the collection. It's just one of those things. But um, yeah, we'll go through them together. Like I said, I've got my digital collection. I've got a, a selection of watches that I keep in like my watch winder. And then I've got my main collection, another box. You'll see it at the end. I'll show you sort of video and photos of, of them all together. But um, yeah, I sort of pan in shots of the watches. I will also put model numbers up so you can see them. And also I will, I, I think I've reviewed all these watches at this point. So I'll also leave a link to the review so you can also look at that as well to see if you, what you think. But um, thanks, for, thanks for tuning back in. Um, and thanks for, for voting for this. I wasn't sure I was going to do a state of the collection this year, but here we are. So I'll start with my digital collection. So guys and girls, coming in and live with this, we've got three digital watches. We've got my Casio G-Shock, we've got a Timex Ironman and my Casio W86. The Casio G-Shock, unbelievable. I've had this a while now. Uh, this is the Gorillas version that they brought out some time ago. I did cut, I did have it on, um, as, but I bought like the full metal jacket stuff you can get for it, where it's a full metal Casio. And I found that I was wearing it less and less on that. I put it back on the resin and actually start wearing it again. It's really, really nice. It comes with, um, you got the black and the red at the bottom, which I quite like, it's a bit of a different accent. And it's a Casio G-Shock in it. So I mean, bomb proof, bulletproof. People have done loads of tests of these watches. They sort of go and go. So yeah, it's been really, really nice to, to, to keep this and actually put it back in how it looks normally. And actually I prefer it, but all personal choice. I want another Casio, the W86. Uh, like I said, I reviewed this a little while ago. I picked this up from Argos about 12 quid at the time and it just seems to me as sort of a modern interpretation or modern sort of f91 f91 is fantastic it's the high, highest grossing watch of all time given how many units they sell but um yeah the light and stuff let it down this has got electroluminescence very very similar proportions but this one just looks a bit more refined so that's why i like it and that's why it stayed in my collection the timex iron man a legend like i've got to say Timex is a brand that hasn't really sort of fitted with me for really generally for a long time. But um, the Timex Ironman was one that I always came back to. Timex do some decent watches, to be honest. You've got the Q reissues and stuff like this. But never really for me. But this one is a banger. I picked this up on Amazon for about £30 a little while ago. And I think you're just hard pushed to find a watch that's very similar to a G-Shock that does what this watch does. Fantastic watch. Really good backlight, obviously, they've got, they're doing bits. And uh, this is one that I don't think I'll ever get rid of. This was watch that I've used for many, many an occasion when I'm doing sort of like removing, removals and bits and pieces. And it's, it's, it's held up really, really well. So they're my three digital watches. I don't own a lot of digital watches, but they're really good because change the battery really easy. You can leave them there, boom, put it on, off you go. So it's nice to have those sort of watches. My other sub collection, the, one, my sub, the ones that are in my sort of watch winder and stuff, First, before I go to that, one that was a, a new edition and one that I wasn't sure I'd keep but I had to is the Bonery Voyager, the bronze one. I had the titanium one in when it came out. It was okay. The bronze one's a banger. Uh, not perfect, but I think for sort of like £80 with what you're getting, I don't think there's a better field watch on the market, to be honest. Uh, bronze, sapphire crystal, Seiko movement, nice dial. The strap got a bit of a kick in uh, from a lot of people, but when you put into perspective what you're getting, yeah, great, great offering and one that I'm really happy to have in my collection. The four that are in my watch winder, you got a Seiko Negroni. I picked this up early doors when I started my channel about three years ago and I fell in love with it. It's a beautiful watch. Just the dial is stunning. Gets its name from the cocktail. You've got the sort of like a cocktail stick second hand. The dial is beautiful. Really well put together. Gilt sort of um, rotor and stuff in the back. Nice leather strap. Hard Lex Crystal, which is a bit of a drawback for the price, but one that I've really, really enjoyed having in my collection and one that I just can't imagine that I'll ever get rid of. Uh, it would take something really special to shift it because I, I tend to try and not have many watches that are the same. So, yeah, I think it's going to be hard pushed for anything to replace that. Um, I've got the Cadison Mechanical Watch. 
Uh, like I said all the model numbers will be in front of me, guys, as we go through. This one's a stunning watch. I like I like the colorways. Like I said, not not an original design by by any stretch of the imagination. But I like what they did with it. I like the cutout to the case. I've put, since put it on a, an orange leather strap because I think it just works a little bit better than the strap they supplied. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really really cool watch. Running the Seagull ST one nine zero zero movement, I believe, um, or zero one. I can't recall. But yeah, it's been running really well. Non hacking movement, but yeah, it does the business. Uh, then I've got a couple of GMTs. I've got my DIY Watch Club GMT and the uh, Bambana. Uh, the, the DIY Watch Club one's really special um, because my wife assembled it for me. Really, really nice. It's got a signed rotor. Um, due to the fact my wife made it for me, due to the fact they were good enough to send it over, due to the fact that it's got a signed rotor, this will be another present in my collection. Uh, running the Seiko NH34 movement. So my wife's first foray into making watches. She had to do a GMT, so fair play to her. Um, but yeah, and then you got the Van Banner Adroet or Adroit. I don't know if I'm always saying that wrong. A cracking watch. Really like the bracelet, but I do prefer it on this Artem sailcloth strap. Um, I just think, like with the black volcanic dial it has um, with the strap, I just think it really complements it personally. So that's why I've settled in it. And since I've done it, I have, it's actually got a bit more wrist time, to be honest. So, and you would have seen pictures just a little while ago of it like that. So. Yeah, that's why I've done it, and I really like it. Like I said, the black with the sort of pink accents looks the business, in my opinion. So let's get on with my main collection. As I said, none of these are in a particular order. Sometimes they might be in order, sometimes they might not. But yeah, the Hamilton Khaki King, unbelievable, cracking watch. Uh, if you don't, if none of you don't own a Hamilton, then you you need to try and get one in your collection. The Khaki King is a legend because it's got the obviously got the day of the week at the top and stuff, but really beautiful. Uh, beautiful watch um, yeah and one that like I said I've said before I was I always thought I'd get the black dial but I don't own anything like a champagne dial watch and I can't imagine I ever would so I thought that makes more sense to have that and I love it really really beautiful watch one that's not ever going to go anywhere to be perfectly honest the Relio Solstice you'll see so this watch is a beautiful piece it came about because I pulled it on eBay the person lied about the condition it turned up in absolute bits scratched to you know what um, and then I just sent it back to them and I contacted Radio because at the time they weren't they weren't sending them. So I contacted said, listen, are you going to be releasing any? I bought this watch on eBay and then the person sent it to me for free, which was very humbling. Uh, they just said, listen, I'm really sorry to hear about your experience. We're going to send you one just to, to, as, a, as a gesture. Reviewed it, stunning watch, love it to bits. One, another watch that I just can't imagine getting rid of. It's a sports watch. It's very dressy. Maybe even Garda, I don't know. Uh, Sapphire Crystal, beautiful dial. Um, Miota 9039 moving inside. H-Link bracelet. Boom, boom, boom. Fantastic. Please do check out Relio. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, Orient Star, one of my favorite watches. I picked this up for £300, and I don't think there's £300 better spent on a watch. This is very, it's got some really Grand Seiko vibes about it. The finishing on it is just belies the price. The dial's stunning. You've got a power reserve indicator. The movement's been doing really well. Dial, yeah, honestly, it's a fantastic watch. I think for what it is, like, I know it sounds patronising, but it's like a poor man's Seiko, if you ask me. I just feel like most of us can't afford watches at that price. But if you want to think similar, I say similar, probably loosely, the aesthetic of it, then I think really, I think really, excuse me, Orient style have you covered. I've got three or, uh, citizens in my watch collection now. I've gone from not having any to having three, you'll see. Um, so I've got the Pro Master. I always know I'd end up with a Pro Master. I always thought it'd be the falling dial. But I've got the blue dial, the sunburst dial. I really liked it on the, the rubber strap, but I've opted for a Long Island watch strap. They do some excellent bracelets, guys, so do check them out. Since I put it on this strap, it gets much, much, much more wrist time. Not even close. Uh, it just makes it feel a little bit more premium, a bit more solid. I love it. Can't lie. You got the JDM uh, Citizen that I featured the with the blue sunburst style. The links in this were a pain. They got pin and collar. Once I've sized it, it's stunning. And the thing is, they've treated the the bracelet and stuff, so it doesn't scratch up. It still looks as good as new. This watch, high beat movement. When you when you turn it around and you see the, what they've done with the the rower and stuff, and yeah, it looks beautiful. Um, but just a stunning watch, and I think again, this is this is this this sort of line of watches from Citizen is massively underappreciated. If you ask me, you got the Saabs and the Sarkses of the world from Seiko, but this is up there for me. I must say, I think it's a it's a cracking watch. And then my final Citizen is the Ciosa. 
Um, this is one that was very sort of marmite last or this year, this, this, this year they've gone. Um, I opted for the sort of like yellowy colour um, because I really liked it. And But I know it's got a lot of criticism. The class breed did let it down. So guys, if you know of of, of an aftermarket class for this, that's from Citizen or something like that, I'd like to fit a fully more class. But yeah, it's one that I really do like. Integrated bracelet. Uh, I think people were complaining about a couple of things, but I, I really like this watch. It's one that I really do like, and it just has a bit of colour. I've got nothing this sort of colour in my collection. Um, other than that, I've got a Seiko Turtle. You'll be able to see uh, Save the Ocean. They call it the Great White because of the fin on there. This was one that I really did like. Um, but I realised it wasn't really getting much wrist time in its current guise on the stainless, stainless steel bracelet and other straps I was putting on it. Clockwork Republic had me covered. They sent me over a blue one, integrated end links, rubber strap, comfy as you like. And since I put it on that, it's just, yeah, it's a different watch. It's mad. New shoes make a big difference to a watch, didn't they? So I must say, with having that on there, it's just sort of taking it to another level in my mind. And um, yeah. But, and also, we, this is my only San Martin, which is crazy to me. Like, I'll be honest, I would have thought I'd have a few. But yes, it's my San Martin. Um, you'll see it's sort of inspired maybe by Se Seiko 62 Mass. This isn't a new line they brought. I've had this a while. This is this is running the PT5000 movement inside. I know people prefer the Seiko in this watch for the continuity, but I actually prefer it with a high beam movement personally. So that's why I like this watch. If you're going to have this watch, in my opinion, the grey is the colour to have. So the San Martin are currently doing sort of blue and stuff, but I'd, I would always go for this colour. Just because I think that's the colour for this watch, personally. But I love this watch. All, all that's missing is their new Glide Lock clasp. So, Sam Martin, if you watch this, please do one for uh, for this watch. I'd really appreciate it. I think it will just take it to another level. Not that it has it, the, Se the Seiko doesn't have it. But I think where you do that for this watch, it'll be wicked. And I'm going to end on a couple of Proximas. So, we've got first is the white enamel dial. I picked this up a little while ago. I love this watch. This watch is unbelievable. Proxim are making some exceptional pieces. There's so much to like about this watch from the crystal clarity. I like the loom, I like obviously the dial, the movement, the finishing. Um, like I said, like I said when I brought the review out, this is a true Garda watch. Like I said, go anywhere, do anything. This has got you covered. Get a couple of straps for it. Boom, off you go. And finally, one of the, the watches that has surprised me most this year, and it's one that sold out during the sale. This Proxima is unbelievable. So I think it's the same case as the, the other Proxima. But what, they, what they've what they done with the colorways and everything else just blew my mind, really. Um, like I said, they sold out during the sale. They contacted me and they said they ran out because they weren't quite expecting the sort of um, clamor for the watch. But I'm not sure why. I know it's a homage watch, but they've done a fantastic job with this watch. It's a fair play to Proxima. They are now back in stock, guys, so do head over and try and pick one up. Um but yeah, that's that's my collection, guys. That's how we've ended 2023. I must say it's very difficult for me to try and maintain that level, like the, how many I've got, because it could get a bit silly. Uh, but I, I like to be able to keep it at a number that I can appreciate them and enjoy them. I actually wear them because when you have too many watches, it's quite easy to not wear them, isn't it? So I really like the fact that I get a bit of time on my watches. Each time I put one of my own watches on, I'm just like, I love it. And you remember why you got you are, you own it. And I'm sure I'm not the only person. I'm sure you all feel that way. But um, guys, thanks for tuning the State of the Collection. It, it was interesting to do. I wanted to do it a little bit different rather than the hands under the camera rolling through it all. I like doing front of the camera stuff. Um, and it just wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to try and, in the next year, I want to try and add a few things. I've got some new equipment coming. So we keep moving forward. But guys, none of this will be possible without you. The last three years have just been crazy. Um, I never thought I'd get 100 subscribers, let alone up to almost 6,000. It was never a thing. But guys, without you, this isn't possible. So a massive, massive thank you. I hope 2023 was kind. I hope 2024 is even better. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas with your friends and family. Just enjoy it. Appreciate the moments because the small moments are what make life what they are, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I'll stop going on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great Christmas and we keep rumbling in 2024. But don't, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and always watch the time. Take care, guys. All the very best.